So when proteins are too big, they need a special mechanism to enter the cell. That mechanism is a vesicle. And this vesicle looks a lot like a cell, except that it's just cell membrane as a pocket sitting outside in the extracellular space. And for reference, here's our cell. So this vesicle will drift towards our cell. Eventually it'll make contact with the cell and begin to fuse with the cell membrane. Now keep in mind when we're fusing right here, what that means is that the protein that was in our vesicle can now be extruded or released into the interior of the cell. And this process where we had a vesicle come and deliver this protein or whatever this large molecule was to the inside of our cell is known as endocytosis. Endocytosis, which is an excellent name because it details exactly what just happened. Something just went into a site or a cell. And specifically this type that I've drawn here is a type known as receptor mediated receptor mediated endocytosis. This type of transportation is very specific. Very specific because it requires a receptor to bind something to say, okay, this is the right vesicle that should be releasing things into the cell. Other than receptor mediated endocytosis, there are actually two other types of endocytosis. One of them, which I'm drawing right here, will come across a bunch of molecules or solutes and stuff and actually will drink them. So I'm drawing it like this because the parts along the cell membrane where this process occurs tends to be heavily infolded and it'll be where it notices that there's a lot of sodium hanging out and say it wants sodium or say it wants some chloride or perhaps there are some specific amino acids the cell's looking for that's in that region. The bottom line is that the cell is actually going to drink this stuff, just gulp it up and bring it all inside of a vesicle that ends up in the cell. This type of endocytosis, where the cell gulps up all of these molecules, is called pinocytosis. Pinocytosis, as you recall, cyte meaning cell, but pino literally means to drink. So pinocytosis is where a cell will drink stuff in the extracellular space. And relative to receptor-mediated endocytosis, pinocytosis is not specific. It'll just gulp up a whole bunch of random things, which can be potentially problematic if one of the things that's hanging out over here is a bacterium. And in fact, pinocytosis is the mechanism by which salmonella Salmonella, which you may have heard of, salmonella infects cells of our gut. The last type of endocytosis we're going to talk about is actually a mechanism the cell uses to fight foreign pathogens, such as bacteria. In this process or this transport mechanism, the cell will make contact with this foreign body, sort of to bind with it with a receptor, and if it notices that it's foreign or it's something that shouldn't be there, it'll actually eat the pathogen. So if I draw this sort of mouth right here, you can see that our foreign bacterium ends up in this vesicle inside the cell, which is kind of a squished place to be. And the cell will actually direct enzymes to go to this vesicle to destroy and digest this bacterium or this foreign pathogen that shouldn't be there in the first place. This process where the cell literally swallows the pathogen alive is called phagocytosis. Phagocytosis, where cyte means cell again, and phago instead of drink means to eat. So the cell is actually going to eat our pathogens. And this process is more specific than pinocytosis. It's more specific but it is still generalizable to foreign pathogens, so it's less specific than receptor-mediated endocytosis. So those are your three types of endocytosis. Let's shift now to exocytosis. How do big things leave the cell? Well, in this process, it all begins in an organelle inside of your cell that's known as the Golgi apparatus. The 
Golgi or Golgi apparatus. And while it's in this plum color, you can still definitely notice this membrane around the Golgi apparatus, the same membrane that's around our cell, and that allows it to release a vesicle that houses a protein that was generated through protein synthesis of the cell. So we end up with this vesicle now that's carrying our protein, which will approach our cell membrane and fuse with it. So there you go, it's fusing, fusing, fusing. And in doing so, this protein that was inside the cell is going to be released. And so this process where we had our Golgi apparatus create this vesicle that released this protein outside of the cell is known as exocytosis. Exocytosis, which means here for the cell or the site for something to exit. And an interesting thing to note here is that that doesn't necessarily mean that the protein has to go into the extracellular space. There are definitely scenarios where the vesicle that comes off the Golgi apparatus has the protein embedded on the membrane itself. So when this vesicle approaches the membrane here and fuses with it, like I've been drawing before, so it's fusing here as well, Notice that the protein that was on the cell membrane stays on the cell membrane. And so it's actually embedded. And that could be for a couple of reasons. This protein may be a channel protein that helps in facilitated diffusion. It could be a sodium potassium pump. It could be any of these things that needs to function on the cell membrane. And so that's an important note to remember. So exocytosis can cause proteins to be ejected, so it can eject proteins from the cell, but at the same time it can also embed proteins, embed proteins in our cell membrane. So these big molecule transport processes are very important for us, not just because they're a conduit to make sure that we get rid of bacteria or other foreign pathogens or processed proteins as they should be, they're actually important for other ways that we can get infections as well. For example, phagocytosis has proteins that are involved that end up getting hijacked by the HIV virus, which can then spread its genetic material and infect throughout the body. Interestingly, we have T cells that can attack and kill foreign things in our body. They're called killer T cells. They have a receptor on them that's called CXCR4. This CXCR4 receptor is actually targeted by the HIV virus and it's bound to this GP41 protein from HIV. Some people though have a genetic alteration in this receptor, this protein that's essential for phagocytosis, and when it's altered in a strange way, GP41 cannot bind it because of this genetic aberration. So people with this rare form of the CXCR4 receptor are actually immune to the HIV virus. They're immune. They're unable to be infected by HIV. How crazy is that? And all of this understanding, this potential mechanism to fight HIV came from an understanding of the process of phagocytosis. Which just goes to show you, you can't ignore what happens even on the smallest unit of life.